The Mayor and City Council welcome you to the Peoria City Council meeting. As a courtesy to others, please silence all phones. If you would like to address an issue that is on the agenda, or if you would like to speak to the Council regarding a non-agenda item, please complete a speaker request form, which can be found in the front lobby of the Peoria City Council Chambers or in the tray to the left of the speaker's podium. Please place the completed speaker request form in the second tray to the left of the speaker's podium labeled Request to Speak. All speakers will have three minutes to complete their comments. A countdown clock is easily visible on the left side of the wall behind the City Council dais. Only items listed on the agenda may be addressed by the Council. Since items presented as part of a speaker's request have not been listed on the agenda and due to the requirements of open meeting laws, the Council will be unable to respond to items presented as part of the speaker's request. However, please be aware that your comments will be noted. The speaker's name will be called to speak at the appropriate time in the order that the forms were received. Thank you for your interest and participation in the Peoria City Council meeting. The Peoria City Council meeting will now come to order. Please rise for a moment of quiet reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Youth Council Liaison Johnson. Thank you. The clerk will please call the roll. Mayor Carlett. Here. Vice Mayor Finn. Here. Mayor Pro Tim Hunt. Here. Council Member Patana. Here. Council Member Binsbacher. Here. Council Member Edwards. Here. Council Member Leone. Here. Council Liaison Johnson. Here. And Council Liaison Gilbertson. Here. All right, we will begin this evening with uh, two presentations, and the first is a recognition of the winners of the Library Card Design Contest, a program in celebration of the National Library Card Month, and I will turn it over to City Manager Jeff Tyne. Great, thank you, Mayor. And I'd like to introduce Nathaniel Washburn, our Library Services Manager, who will provide the presentation. Council and thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity to present our 2018 library card contest winners. As you know, September was National Get a Library Card Month and with the help of our friends organization, we were able to sign up 850 wow. new library card wow. users. So That's truly amazing. Thank you. We, uh, we like to close out September with the selection of our two library card contest winners. These young artists will have their artwork displayed on our library cards for the next year. And the, the contest is always connected to our summer reading program. This year's theme was Libraries Rock, so very exciting. Uh, we had over 300 entries this year, which was an increase from last year. And really, the designs were truly amazing. Great young artists out there. Uh, we selected a grade school winner as well as a high school winner, and uh, they will each receive a copy of their artwork here along with a $100 gift card courtesy of our friends as well as Council Member Edwards. Uh, this year's grade school winner was Quincy Johnson. She's a sixth grader at uh, Skyview Elementary. She loves art, music, hanging out with friends, and the great outdoors. Quincy's favorite thing about the library is borrowing books and participating in the activities. Uh, one of her favorite memories was going up north to the Spruce Dale Ranch and riding horses, playing with new friends. This year's high school winner was Daniel Apodaca, and uh, Daniel's a junior at Peoria High School. His interest in reading, cooking, and of course, drawing. He also likes to act and hopes to be an actor one day as he was just recently in a uh, production of The Crucible. His favorite things about the library is that they are free. Uh, he believes libraries are a place of valuable knowledge that others have accumulated and organized for the public. He believes libraries are a creative environment for all ages and he truly cherishes that libraries bring people together uh, through their activities and their workshops. 
Uh, at this point, I would like to invite both of our winter winners down, Quincy and Daniel. And uh, if we could please have a, a photo with the mayor, that would be fantastic. We'd like to invite the mayor down for that as well and present our awards to our two winners. I would like to take a moment to thank our uh, friends organization, uh, Diane Jordan, the president, the rest of the Friends Executive Board, as well as their membership for their uh, support of our mission at the libraries, which is one of literacy and creating lifelong learners. Uh, on behalf of Diane and the Friends, uh, I was asked to mention a few upcoming events. The Friends invite you to become a part of their community literacy effort and join them as supporters of the Peoria Libraries. Everyone is welcome to visit the Friends Tuesday, October 16th at their general meeting with a 2.30 meet and greet and a 3 o'clock general meeting. Join the Friends and make a difference in the community. Uh, they also have two upcoming book sales they would like me to mention. The first is at our Explore the Library event on the 20th of October, and then the second is the festive fall book sale on, uh, in November from the 1st to the 3rd at Sunrise Mountain. So please come out and support the friends. We appreciate it. Again, Mayor and Council, thank you for this opportunity and congratulations to our winners. Right. Our next presentation is a recognition of awards received by Theater Works and our good friend Constance McMillan. And I will turn it over to City Manager Jeff Tyne again. Great, thank you. And I'm going to introduce Mary Lou Stevens. Uh, Mary Lou is our Arts and Special Events Manager and can discuss the, uh, the major awards with Theater Works, our major tenant at the Performing Arts Center. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tyne. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I am honored as the Arts and Events Manager for the city to be here tonight to present to you awards that were received by Theater Works and Constance W. McMillan at the 28th Annual Arizona Awards of Excellence. The Arizona Awards promote the visibility, cooperation, and growth of theater in the Valley and is dedicated to recognizing excellence in theater performances as well as individuals who produce exceptional work in all aspects of theater. The Arizona Awards, also known as the Zoni Awards, has 40 participating theaters with thousands of shows adjudicated in all areas of theater, as well as special awards for distinguished service and outstanding contribution in the theater community. As the managing tenant and resident theater company of the Peoria Center for the Performing Arts located in the heart of Old Town, Theater Works has consistently produced quality programming. Each year, on average, Theater Works provides Peoria residents and visitors with over 200 community-based productions that draw approximately 35,000 patrons. It is an asset to Peoria and central to achieving the City Council's livability goal of arts and culture. Theater Works was publicly honored for the quality of its productions by the Arizona Awards of Excellence on September 17th with over 800 in attendance with 56 nominations and 12 awards for productions in their 2017-18 season. Also recognized with the Max McQueen Distinguished Service Award was philanthropist and arts advocate Constance McMillan. Ms. McMillan's dedication to the operation of the West Valley Art Museum and support of theater works and other arts organizations makes her a strong advocate for Peoria and all of our arts programs. The Max McQueen Distinguished Service Award honors an individual, corporation, or organization outside the established theater community that has contributed either financially or non-traditionally in support of local theater and its further recognition, security, and growth in the Valley. A true patron of the arts, Connie has made a significant impact to the efforts of arts organizations in the Valley. She was instrumental in raising funds to have theater works move into the Peoria Center for the Performing Arts, where the Black Box Theater is named after her. 
She also served on every committee at Theater Works and has served as a board member. In 2016, <laughs> Connie established the Macmillan Foundation, which awards a recent graduate of her alma mater, Stevens College, a year-long paid fellowship in the education program at Theater Works. And by the way, that education fellow is here with us this evening as well, so that's awesome. Connie's name can also be found as a donor at the Black Theater Troupe, and beyond the theater community, she's a generous donor to the West Valley Arts Museum, the Phoenix Chorale, the West Valley Arts Council, Arizona Citizens for the Arts, and Phoenix Center for the Arts. Peoria is clearly well represented valley-wide by the accomplishments of Theater Works and Constance McMillan. And I have before you the many awards, the 12, that Theater Works also garnered um, at the evening at, on September 17th. And joining us tonight is Constance McMillan. And from Theater Works, we have Chris Hamby, Producing Artistic Director, and Kate Hinkle, Managing Director, along with staff and board directors and some of the individual award winners which are recognized on this slide for their artistic and technical achievements. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating them on their accomplishments. Thank you. We would love to have a photo opportunity with the mayor as well as Mayor Pro Tem, Vicki Hunt. We would be happy. Thank you. Honored. Hi, I want you to be by me, of course. <laughs> I would just like to say congratulations to all of you for sure, um, but thank you for making Peoria so proud. We, I mean, it's amazing. 56, is it 56 nominations? That's crazy, <laughs> crazy. And, yeah, I wish, I wish everyone could have been here tonight, but 12 awards plus you, lucky 13, we are just really so, so thrilled and proud. Thank you. Thank you again for the wonderful contributions that Theater Works and Constance McMillan has made in our community. Okay, now we will move on to the consent agenda. Consent agenda consists of items that have been previously um, looked at by the City Council. Uh, council, are there any items to be removed from consent? All right, do I have a motion? A motion. Second. The motion is second. Council, please vote. And the consent agenda passes unanimously. We will now move on to new business. Item 8R is contract amendment, MGC, Contractors Inc., Butler Recharge Well, Butler Treatment Plant, 7th Avenue, and Butler Drive. Mr. Tyne. Great, thank you, Mary. And Adina Lung, our Development and Engineering Director, will make the introduction, introduction on our project lead for this. Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good evening, <laughs> Mayor and Council. It's been a long day. I wanted to introduce tonight Daniel Keel. He is the engineering supervisor in my department, and he oversees the majority of the water and wastewater projects, capital projects that are done by the city, with his team of two other engineers. So those projects don't get a lot of notoriety because they're underground or they're buried behind a wall, but we do spend quite a bit of capital dollars and they are very interesting. So I'm gonna turn it over to him. Thank you, Adina. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The item before you is agenda item 8R, which is a request for a contract amendment for MGC contractors to complete installation of a groundwater recharge well at our Butler Water Reclamation Facility. Just a little project background. The, um, the graphic before you on the screen is actually the location of our Butler treatment plant. It's approximately 79th Avenue, just south of Olive, just adjacent to Pioneer Park. Currently, the plant um, provides water approximately 7 million gallons a day to what is known as the New River Agua Fria Underground Storage Project. Uh, that is a series of recharge basins that are located across, across from the uh, Glendale Arizona Cardinals football stadium. We also uh, provide about a half a million gallons a day during, uh, during the summer, really during our peak season, to our reclaimed water system, which is in southern Peoria. Uh, that reclaimed water system typically provides water for uh, landscape irrigation, uh, water features, uh, including Pioneer Park. The benefits of recharge, um, really, um, we like to keep it local. So really what we're, what we're hoping to do going forward is to keep as much of that water within our own city limits. Um, rather than to set it to those recharge basins. Um, there's a lot of good benefits for that, um, it, but it does provide additional flexibility for our recharge program, as well as providing uh, flexibility or redundancy for our reclaimed water system as well. Um, it allows us to preserve drinking water. When we recharge groundwater uh, with our treated effluent, it does preserve drinking water for our future. 2016, we actually drilled what is known as a test well. That test well um, was really um, serve the purpose of determining whether or not recharge would be possible at that location. We were successful, so we did find that the, the Butler plant would be a good location for that. Um, MGC Contractors were, was the, uh, the contractor for that project, and we did subsequently reward them with a pre-construction services contract. That contract, MGC, uh, was put under to provide uh, construction services during design, which is typically um, review of plans for constructability feedback and cost estimating. The planned improvements include uh, a 1 million gallon a day recharge well that is currently approximately 12% of the plant flow that, as I mentioned, will be located all on site. MGC was awarded that pre-construction contract earlier this year. The previous one that I had mentioned in 2016 was just for the test well and then the design portion that they gave us that uh, constructability feedback and cost estimating was in May. Um, our approach with the request tonight is to do what's uh, known as a phased award for construction. So while that uh, pre-construction services contract was put in place, we had intended from the beginning to come back and ask for this uh, contract amendment for construction. The amount of that uh, contract request or amendment request is $1,943,167. That is a guaranteed maximum price provided by MGC, and that is to what we call equip a well. So we typically will drill a test well, determine if that location is feasible, then we will put in a permanent well. Uh, once that well is in the ground, then we have to come back and provide piping. Um, we have to come back and do the, uh, the well itself, the pump, and then do all the electrical and some of the associated things to actually make the well operational. Our, con our construction schedule includes, um, with approval tonight, includes a construction start date in October, later this month. We estimate completion in August of 2019. So currently we are uh, ahead of schedule. Our recommendation is to award a contract amendment to MGC contractors for $1,943,167 to equip the Butler Recharge Well for operation. With that, I'll take any questions. Thank you. Council, any questions? Um, I have a question. I just need to clarify, will, will we be able to now recharge 1 million gallons a day more, or is this the total amount that we've been recharging and we're just dividing it into two different locations? 
Mayor, typically what we're going to be doing in this case is actually diverting some of that flow that is normally going to the New River Agua Fria Underground Storage Project, the NAUSP. Uh, we'll be diverting that and keeping it within our own limits so that we're recharging the groundwater below the city of Peoria rather than sending it to those basins. Well, I really appreciate you doing this. I know we've had some, some issues with that um, joint location in the past, and so it's better safe than sorry. I think this is a really great idea. Council, any comments? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Please vote. And it passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the call to the public for non-agenda items. If you wish to address the City Council, please complete a speaker request form and place it in the bin next to the speaker's podium. I have received no speaker request forms, so I will move on to reports from City Manager. Mr. Tyne. Great. Thank you, Mayor. And first, uh, we have a series of uh, brief uh, presentations to acknowledge some just exciting uh, activities have gone. First off, I'd like to introduce Chief Bobby Reese and his staff to talk about uh, an award we recently received from the Arizona Department of Health Services. And I'll pass it to Chief Reese. Mayor, Council, good evening, and thank you, Mr. Kime. Um, I am here with a couple of special individuals. Two, if I can figure this out, to talk about an award we received from the Arizona Department of Health Services again. And uh, they do this every two years. Two years ago, we were the first ones to receive the uh, designation of uh, Heart Safe City, or now they're calling it Heart Safe Community. And uh, it's a real honor because it's a statewide. Uh, designation and today currently there's there's only 10 jurisdictions in Arizona that have it and so I'm very happy to report this is an effort that uh, we have several departments in the city that that have assisted in getting us here but at the core of, of this award are always a couple of people that put in a lot of hard work and with me today are those two hard working people that have uh, led us there and uh, maintained this award for us over the last couple of years. And with me today, I have Chief Jim Bratchard to my right and to my left. I have Kyle Lane, our education uh, program coordinator. Okay. Get it right. <laughs> and uh, so with without further ado, I'll turn it over to uh, Chief Bratcher to tell you all about the award and how we got there and what it is. Thank you, Chief Reese, and good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll talk a little bit about the criteria for the award and uh, how we meet that criteria um, and the work we put into that, and actually the entire city is put into that. And start off with a public access defibrillation program. Peoria has uh, AEDs, automatic external defibrillators in all its public buildings, Pioneer Park and Rio Vista Park. Uh, it is a robust program. Uh, training of Peoria staff, the award requirements were, were for 50% of the staff to be trained. Uh, we're, we're proud to announce, and with the entire city, uh, all the staff are trained in CPR AED use uh, through, throughout their course of employment here. Uh, our AEDs are registered with the DHS SHARE program. Uh, the SHARE program is one of the time-sensitive illness programs with the Department of Health Services, which um, is the Save Hearts in Arizona Registry and Education. And we partner with them uh, on a lot of different projects uh, that we do within Fire Medical. Uh, we report our NEAED use to, to the program. Uh, we offer, and that is uh, Kyle's uh, forte, uh, a lot of CPR AED training for the public, and I'll let him talk uh, specifically about his accomplishments there. And we uh, transport and use a treatment called minimally interrupted CPR or high-performance CPR, 
in, in partnership with the bystander response and AED use and work with the hospitals and transport to uh, cardiac care centers. And we're fortunate that all the hospitals within the vicinity of Peoria have worked towards and achieved that recognition from the Department of Health Services for being cardiac care centers. Mm -hmm. With that, I'll let Kyle talk about some of our accomplishments. Thank you, Chief. Uh, good evening. Uh, you can see on the screen that in the last year, we uh, trained almost 1,600 people in the city of Peoria in uh, CPR, or what we call CCC now, continuous chest compressions, or you might know it as hands-only uh, CPR. Uh, of those, uh, 1,075 were adults, and 523 were teens and children. Uh, in CPR circles, typically uh, children aren't trained in CPR because they lack the physical ability to do chest compressions, but we've taken the tack that uh, the more children are exposed to CPR, more people are exposed to it, the better uh, they retain in an emergency the ability to do CPR. So starting when they're super young, we like to expose them to the mannequins and participate in that. In addition, the uh, Arizona State Legislature passed a law requiring incoming high school freshmen beginning last year in 2017 to be trained in CPR as a requirement for graduation. So we reached out to the uh, Peoria schools and offered our services in that. The way the law was written as we interpret it, uh, it could have just been a homework assignment that they were given and we wanted it to be more than that. And so we reached out and so you'll see that elevated number with teens. We had several schools reach out to us to help them with that training and so we're pretty proud of that. Uh, additionally, all city staff receive training, as Chief Bratcher said, every four years. And uh, I'll just give them a, a shout out that they, uh, I've never had a single city employee uh, not be excited and participating in the training and uh, laughing at my uh, <coughs> jokes. And so I appreciate that. But um, I've just, I've tried to communicate to them that we expect them to be able to do this uh, skill with a citizen who's in need or one of their coworkers. And then, of course, uh, Chief Bratcher mentioned the public access defibrillation program. Um, we train all city staff in the use of an AED. They're designed to be used sight unseen, but it, we find it helps if they've seen it before. And because the city is so uh, progressive in that area, it enables me to convince other groups to purchase AEDs. So we've been able to convince churches, clubs, uh, businesses to purchase AEDs because the city is so uh, robust in its own program. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back to Chief Bratcher for a few other things. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, as Chief mentioned, we are one of uh, the first city and we are one of only 10 cities in the state, uh, communities in the state that have been recognized with the Safe Hearts Community Award. And we continue to uh, participate with the Arizona Department of Health Services in many projects, as I mentioned before, uh, with uh, cardiac care, including uh, the early recognition of myocardial infarction or heart attack, and communication with the hospitals, and transmitting 12 lead EKGs from the scene to the hospital to expedite patient care. I'd like to take just a moment to recognize our partners. Uh, and Arizona Department of Health Services has worked with us extensively, and we're proud to partner with them on this award. Uh, the University of Arizona, which provides research into what we're doing, and we're continually trying to improve, and with their help and feedback, we, we have been able to participate in several research projects. Uh, as Kyle mentioned, the schools have been open and receptive, and we really appreciate that. And then within the city, we can't do this by ourselves. Human Resources Department has been fantastic in facilitating uh, the, treat, uh, the uh, training of staff. Uh, public Works and Facilities, they are kind of our backbone. They actually go out and do the legwork and check all the AEDs in the city, which continue to expand. That's a fairly large job. Uh, make sure they're operational and, and uh, interface with us. Uh, community Services for uh, affording space and uh, uh, opportunity to train the public in hands-only CPR, which uh, we offer quarterly. And the area hospitals, which have been very cooperative in giving us feedback and uh, helping us uh, continue to improve our cardiac care in the city. One last partner that is not up on the slide, and that is uh, I'd like to thank everybody who went through the CPR training in the public. 
It's the bystanders that, that is a critical component to survivability in cardiac arrest. Uh, by early bystander intervention, early use of the AED, and early access to 911. And for those, the, those folks that have taken that effort and the, are an asset their, to their community and willing to get involved in, in an emergency, uh, a tremendous thanks. And that is really the backbone of our pro program is our public participation. Mayor Council, that's our presentation. We thank you. If there's any questions, we'll answer them. Um, if somebody from the public would like to be trained, how do they get in touch with you? Good question. Oh, that, there you go. Yes. One more. That's, all right. uh, they can telephone the fire department. They can telephone me directly. Um, should I give that number? Yeah, sure. 623-773-7919. And, uh, Seven we, nine one nine. Yes, ma'am. Not nine one one. No, no. no. <laughs> okay. Only for an emergency. Got it. Any other questions, Council? Councilmember Fatana. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just want to say, Chief, it's an amazing thing that our entire staff is trained in CPR and the AED. It certainly does make for a much um, safer work environment. Thank you for that. My question is: one question is, what is the cost for an AED device? They will typically run a, a little over $1,000 to $2,000 okay. uh, in that range. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. We appreciate the presentation. Mayor Council, and thank you for your, your support. We're a heart safe community. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you, Chiefs Bradshaw and Reese and, and Mr. Lane. Appreciate that. The next item we wanted to introduce a special employee. We have Chief. Miller, our police chief, who will introduce a very special employee. Ms. Smith uh, helps with a very critical role of assisting victims of crime here in the city, but also has been recently acknowledged as well. And I'll, I'll pass it over to Chief Miller. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, on September 22nd, I had the pleasure of attending an awards banquet uh, put on by Eve's Place. And uh, I was very impressed with the, uh, the work they do within our region in serving our public that are victims of domestic violence, whether they're uh, young boys or girls, or men or women. And um, the, uh, the stories that were heard that night were very, uh, very heartfelt. And what, what I took away from it was that there's people out in our community that really do care. Uh, police and fire respond to domestic violence on a, on a daily basis. And uh, they're the first responders. And then once the investigation begins, that's where Stephanie uh, steps in to uh, to offer assistance throughout um, uh, to handle these uh, these specific cases. A uh, little bit about Ease Place is a nonprofit organization that provides innovative and empowerment-based programs to victims of domestic violence, sexual, and teen dating abuse. Each year, the organization recognizes top professionals. Victims Assistance Coordinator Stephanie Smith was selected as Advocate of the Year. Ease Place recognized Ms. Smith as a steadfast and valuable asset to their program. The partnership between the Peoria Police Department and Eve's Place strives to make services and support available to victims of domestic violence and sexual and teen dating abuse. And uh, Stephanie, I don't know if you want to add to your, uh, what your resume is. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Council members. I just want to bring about awareness for domestic violence. October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month and it is a prevalent issue within our society. Even though there's a lot of things being done as far as awareness, we have to come together and do what we can as far as bringing resources and assistance to these victims. I don't do this work alone. I do have a handful of volunteers, very dedicated volunteers, and a very small staff. I do have two full-time victim advocates, and I am currently hiring for another, so we can continue to bring about uh, excellent resources for our victims of domestic violence here in Peoria. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, we want to congratulate you on this great, on, on the great designation, but I also want to say that I have heard about the work that you do as a victim's advocate for, for quite a long time, so it is my pleasure to finally meet you. Thank you for bringing her here tonight. <laughs> it is really an honor, and I hope you enjoyed our City Hall being purple last night. 
I did, saw that the it? city lighted uh, Peoria for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and I realized that you've done this in years past. So thank you very mm -hmm. much for taking awareness for the city. I appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you very much for what you do, too. Council, are there any other comments? Nope. All right. Thank, well, you, thank you very much. You so much. Thank you. Great, thank you, and congratulations again. Um, Next, we wanted to talk a little bit about our communications team. And as you are all aware, City Council, the amazing productions that we have put together to, uh, for our Peoria residents. Um, and there was an acknowledgement of that as well. And I think all of you are aware of this, but it's really important that our public know the, the high standards that we have. So with that, I'd like to introduce Jen Stein. Uh, Jen is our Director of Communications. Thank you. What's that? Is that an Emmy? Thank you, Mr. Tyne. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, as many of you know, we received and won the prestigious Emmy um, recently. And I wasn't able, I didn't have the opportunity to deliver an acceptance speech. So I have one tonight, <laughs> <laughs> prepared and ready to go. Um, I would first like to thank you, Mayor and Council, for all of your support. It means a lot to my team, so thank you very much. Um, a special thanks goes to Joe Stone. He is the one who produced a beautiful story about a group of knitters who meet weekly at our Peoria Main Library. And this group, they take on a lot of different projects, but the particular one we featured involved the group making specialized knitted prosthetics for breast cancer survivors. And so, that's a story that resulted in this incredible Emmy. Um, I'd also like to give a huge thanks to Christina Perez. She is the one, our marketing, our digital media manager, who oversees the digital team, and she um, is the one who submitted the Emmy nomination. And then a special thanks to Nathaniel, if he's still out there, Nathaniel Washburn, our library manager, because he's the one who shared the story with me. But really, I'm thankful for all the departments we work with. Um, we know there are so many amazing stories here in Peoria, and yours and theirs cooperation, creativity, and initiative is what's really helping us share, and um, it's the key to shedding the spotlight on the great things happening in our community. This is such an honor. We were the only municipality um, to earn this Emmy in the region, which is comprised of five states, and more than 1,000 Emmy um, submissions were generated. This is really a testament to my team for their hard work, their dedication, and talent. Um, our digital team, Eric Rodriguez, Ed Oliver, and Sean Mikowski, work so hard to deliver top-notch, high-quality video. In fact, we'll be seeing a video right after this shortly. Um, but really, the, the most important thing is we are all part of something special here. And I hope that this Emmy inspires each one of us to continue to discover the gems storytell, and find the stories that represent our community. Thank you. Pretty incredible. It is pretty incredible. Lift it up. Show everybody. <laughs> Yay! Great. Thank you. The music hadn't even started, so thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, the last item I had was uh, um, uh, our video of the upcoming city events, and just a, a word of warning is it's a little longer than normal because there's a lot of activities going on. Evidently, you will not be seeing that tonight, but we have a lot of activities going on. So, we will <laughs> so uh, of course, we do have a park fest that is uh, going on, a number of other special events that are, are highlighting, and we can get you a list for that shortly. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We won an Emmy. <laughs> Pretty cool, I just have to say. Five states, 1,000 submissions, and we were the only city that won an Emmy. I don't think we are going to show it. We're not going to show it, right, the video? It is to be seen. Uh, since we can't show that right now, I will tell you I've seen it, and so tell me what I saw it on. Uh, was it a city uh, website? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so it's on the P City of Peoria website, and it is truly remarkable. 
It is so professional, and it, it's a very moving story for, for one thing, but they don't just give Emmys for moving stories. They, uh, they give it for the entire package, which is just excellence all the way through. And so do go on our website and look at it, and then maybe we'll be able to show it uh, to the whole viewing public uh, in two weeks. But it's well worth a trip to the website. Because we won an Emmy. Won an Emmy. <laughs> yes. Don't, don't it's quite a big deal. Okay. So, thank you, Mr. Tyne. Okay, we will now move on to Youth Council Liaison Johnson. Uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate the Library Card Design winners mm -hmm. and uh, the Arizona Theater Works winners and uh, all the other awards Peary has won. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Patena. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> On Sunday, September 23rd, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, POWMIA recognition ceremony at Rio Vista Center. Um, this is a club that, uh, it's a Vietnam veterans club along with a legacy motorcycle club. Uh, Barbara Hatch with the Veterans Heritage Project was there to give a speech. Uh, they had the combat dolls there, um, the women who support this club, and they dress up in 40s and 50s attire. Um, this is the opportunity for this club to remember our POWs and our MIAs and to, and to recognize them on a yearly basis. Um, I was happy to speak uh, um, at this, uh, an opportunity to have to speak at this event. Uh, this is a war, the Vietnam War, that I'm familiar with. It's, it's the war I grew up with. And uh, a lot of those men that were there on uh, Sunday uh, they were, they were kids when they went to this war, and now a lot of them are pushing 70 years old. And the one thing that concerns them all is that uh, they don't want to be forgotten. And I think that this uh, opportunity we had Sunday to remember the uh, Vietnam veterans, the, the, the uh, POWs and the MIAs was very, very important to them, and it's happy, I was happy to be part of that. On Saturday, September 29th, I attended the uh, 100 Club Annual uh, Schechter Lee Gala. Uh, the mission of the Hunter Club of Arizona is to provide financial assistance to families of first responders who are seriously injured or killed in the line of duty. This year, the organization is celebrating 50 years of serving the public safety community. And uh, the husband of our own council person, uh, Bridget Binsbacher, was, uh, John uh, Binsbacher, was recognized as the firefighter of the year. Uh, quite an honor for, for John, and it was well-deserved. Congratulations to our library card design winners. Uh, they were really good pictures drawn by uh, high schoolers and grade schoolers. Congratulations to Peoria Fire on your award and being a heart safety community. Uh, congratulations to the police on being recognized for its work on domestic violence issues. And certainly congratulations to Jen Stein uh, and her communications department for winning an, em an Emmy. And, Jimmy, and Jen, I know you gave uh, uh, props to your, to your staff, as you well should, but don't forget that you lead that department <laughs> and you have taken it to a whole new level. So thank you for all you do. That's all I have, ma'am. Thank you. Council Member Binsbacher. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Patena for those very kind words yeah. and I my it was a tremendous honor and I know that my husband would want me to um, make sure that everyone knows that we know that there are so many amazing men and women doing wonderful work in public safety um, that he shares that award with he happened to be nominated but there's a lot of great work being done um, I too want to congratulate the library card design winners. I think that's fantastic that we engage the youth. Also, uh, Theater Works on their Arizona Awards and Constance McMillan for um, all the work that they do in, in theater and arts in our city. And it really does make uh, our city better and adds tremendous quality of life to our city. Um, Congratulations to Peoria Fire Medical for being a heart safe community. 10 cities in the state of the Arizona, that is fantastic. And I have to say, the AEDs, the training absolutely works. It saves lives and I think it's fantastic. 
um, that everyone has been engaged in that effort. So congratulations. Um, to, I'm, I'm, I think Stephanie Smith stepped out, and I should have said this while she was still here. I watched her speak for the first time, I think it was in 2013, through um, the police, Citizens Police Academy, and I was amazed at the work that she was doing and what was happening be behind the scenes. Um, so I was amazed by her then and the work that was being done in support of victims. And it's no surprise that she is Advocate of the Year. Eve's Place, also a great organization. I'm still amazed by her now, and I think it's fantastic that we have a program like that in our city. Um, and Jen, yay, you won an Emmy. Your team won an <laughs> Emmy. It's fantastic and truly a testament um, to the quality work that your department's putting out and, and the branding and the story that you're telling for Peoria. So thank you for that. Um, I attended Benavia's professional friends lunch um, of last week and was just amazed. If, if all of you know, I'm sure, about Benavia and the wonderful work they do, but what was so inspiring was how so many other electeds and business leaders and civic leaders were there all in support of Benavia and the wonderful work that they are doing to support the senior community and, and families in our, our West Valley cities and, and all over, and it was just fantastic. Um, I was proud that Peoria was supporting that event. Um, and then I also went to Weimar's Economic Development Forum, uh, which was a really good event, very, so worthwhile, but what I walked away from that I loved hearing was the holistic ap approach to um, economic development in the West Valley and really heightening our credibility and the opportunities that exist here. It was definitely a busy couple of weeks. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor Finn. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be very brief. I also want to congratulate everyone on their awards this evening, um, Jen, especially you and, and your team. Mayor, what was it that they won again? They won an uh, Emmy. An Emmy, it that's right. An okay. Emmy, a okay. real live Emmy. <laughs> and uh, uh, Bridget, you and your family, congratulations on that wonderful award. That's fantastic. Um, I also wanted to thank just the city in general. We kind of got some pretty rough weather days here, past couple of uh, days, probably going into tomorrow. So thank you for all that you're doing out there. and. Uh, making sure that our citizens are, are, are safe and um, everything's running as smooth as it possibly can. And, and then one final um, thanks to our, our uh, police officers. We did have an uh, officer involved shooting uh, about a week ago over something so trivial. I believe it was a half a gallon of milk, which just blows my mind. But it, uh, it just makes you think about what they walk into every day. They have no idea what they are walking into. And I'm just very, very thankful that they're there and I'm sure that the citizens feel the same way. So thank you for all that you do. Council Member Edwards. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I'll echo the sentiments of the council. Uh, Jen, congratulations. Is it an Oscar next or, <laughs> or another Emmy? Um, uh, congratulations to you and your team for phenomenal uh, work. Uh, also, congratulations to Stephanie on her uh, award and to the, the youth of Peoria that, uh, that won the awards for the library cards. It was this phenomenal work, and I'm excited to see uh, what those cards look like when I go over to the library. On the 24th, I was able to uh, participate in a panel discussion over in Scottsdale for the uh, Metropolitan Exchange of IT um, conference, and so I was one of the panel participants uh, in talking about the importance of transforming government through our IT department. And, um, Peoria has a phenomenal IT group, and we are in safe hands with our IT group. They are constantly monitoring um, cyber attacks and hacking and are always on top of all of the threats that uh, you hear about in the newspaper all the time. And so kudos to the IT department for the work that they do behind the scenes to keep not only the residents of Peoria, but the staff of Peoria safe. So thank you for that. And then. Um, Last week, I was able to attend a, a friendship bench dedication over at Sunset Heights. Uh, Councilman Patena uh, graciously asked me to attend in his absence of so care, and I want to thank you for uh, going with me and uh, unveiling that bench. We had about uh, 300 young students there um, mm. listening to uh, and taking a pledge to um, anti-bullying, and so it was really a neat experience with the Lions Club as well, and so the bench was dedicated by the Lions Club and it's just one of several across the city at our schools, and I hope that they'll continue to do that to uh, promote uh, anti-bullying in the schools. 
And then finally, um, last week, along with Mayor Pro Tem Hunt, we attended a uh, luncheon over at Piora High School and with the Flex Academy over there, and we talked about um, the importance of transportation and we had about 20 students, I believe, uh, and we talked about uh, the challenges that the youth have uh, in, in getting around not only Peoria, but getting around uh, the Valley in general, and they had some great uh, ideas and suggestions that we're gonna be talking about in further discussions on how um, we can help the youth get around uh, the city. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Hunt. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, I did attend that, that lunch, and anytime I can be around high school students, I'm happy and especially Peoria High School, I'm really happy. And this was just a great bunch of kids, and uh, I'm continually amazed that we think they know more about things like transportation than they do, and it just reminded me that, that we can't take that for granted. We have a, a, a Route 80, 83 bus now, a city bus, that goes right, has stops both directions, right at Peoria High School, and a couple of these students actually use it, but most of them said they didn't have any idea how to actually get on that bus, what kind of a ticket they needed, what it was going to cost them. And so I, I was really interested that there's quite an education piece that we've been sort of taking for granted, although we haven't had the route for very long, so we're still kind of on top of it, but uh, that, that was really interesting. Kids always seem to teach me something. Um, the 27th, uh, Thursday, let's see, it was after that, we, I raced back to the firefighters breast cancer uh, lunch, and that's always really fun too, lots of pink, and uh, just a great, a great group of people and a great cause that they support, and they do it every year with three or four different uh, events. Somos Peoria, Old Town Peoria, had a huge festival uh, this past weekend. Started Friday night, and that was uh, Viejo Ciudad, the old Pueblo, the old city, and that was uh, a smaller event, but very nice and very well attended. And then the big event started at two o'clock on Saturday and had uh, three very, very well-known big bands there, and um, I don't know who would know that, but I, I haven't heard a number in attendance. Last year it was 20,000. Do we know yet, Jen, or John, or anybody? 15,000 this year. That's a lot of people in Old Town, and it makes me very happy to have them there. Uh, speaking of Old Town, uh, many of you that were around about 2002, remember when the Albertson store across, there was Walmart and then a few little stores and then a big Albertson store. And the Albertson store moved up to Cactus and 83rd Avenue and we've been without a grocery store really close here. We do have the Walmart. But I'm very pleased to announce that we now have a full service grocery store in there where that Albertson's used to be and it's called Peoria Discount Grocers, and they have a, a kind of a different plan. Uh, they are like a Costco, but you don't have to have a membership, so you can go in and buy in bulk, or you can go in and buy a loaf of bread and a, a bottle of milk if you want to. You can buy any way that you want to in there, so uh, be sure and stop in and see if they can meet some of your close-up grocery shopping needs. Um, I think with Somos Peoria, that was, um, I think that was the highlight of my weekend. And so with that, I will say good night. Thank you. Council Member Leone. <clears throat> uh, yes, thank you. Just want to tell you on the, on the 27th of September, I went to the breast cancer uh, awareness at the uh, Pine District. Uh, in a pine room. It was great. I just want to say that uh, the cadets in the fire department did a great job serving. And I just also want to mention that all the volunteers did a great job and the vendors did too. And I hope they uh, made a lot of money that day because we needed it for that breast cancer. Also on Friday, 
I went to the same uh, Somnus. Uh, that's it, right? Somos. So, uh, Somos at the celebration at Peoria Park. At the, I'm sorry, at Osuna Park. It was great. Friday and Saturday, it was a packed house. And I did want to mention that the fire department and the police department did a great job uh, protecting the people down there. And uh, it was just a great, great event. And I'd like to see more events like that come up. Also, don't forget this weekend is Country Meadows Park Fest. We're gonna show movies and have free hot dogs and Cokes and potato chips. And uh, we're also gonna give away five bikes, five bikes. Is that right, Karen, five bikes? We're gonna give away five bikes. And what's the name of the movie? I'm Sincere. Yeah, whatever she said. <laughs> so anyway, it's gonna be a great fun. Bring your kids down there and enjoy yourself. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Youth Council Liaison Gilbertson. Thank you, Mayor. I would also like to congratulate all the award winners. It's really amazing to see how active and astonishing Peoria is. And I know last meeting I mentioned that we pinned down a date for the teen job fair. Um, and we still have. But I just want to keep you guys updated. And we're really excited because we have a meeting coming up and we're going to figure out our plan exactly where it's going to take place and iron out all the details, and we're gonna continue working on um, Youth Government Day. So we're very excited. Good, great, thank you. And um, you know, with all of the awards that you heard here this evening, and all of the um, involvement with our, with our citizens, our youth, it is probably a really good reason that Money Magazine rated the city of Peoria the number one city in Arizona in which to live. Number one, number one in Arizona. <laughs> we did win an Emmy, nobody else won an Emmy, of course, but nobody else was rated number one. Um, across the nation, they, uh, they did all of their data on 583 different cities, and out of the, all, all of those in the nation, we were number 29. So I think that is just pretty darn cool. So yay, Peoria. Oh, do you want to watch the video from? Okay, are we watching the event video or the video from the Emmy? The event video. We will now watch the event video. Oh, what's this? Oh, this is London. It's wonderful. Aunt Lucy always dreamed of coming to London. If she saw this, it would be like she were finally here. Aunt Lucy! Oh, Paddington. This is perfect.
Great video. Thank you for that. And there being no further business, we are adjourned. <laughs>